So it's finally time to start playing with the lathe. I got the belts on, and it works. So that part's cool. So next to test some of the setup of the pulleys. So I bought a non-contact non tachometer just to do some of these tests because otherwise I'm not going to know what the speeds are. So this just goes through the different speeds. And it goes from like 2,000 something to 400 something on the speeds. Some of them are easier to set than others for switching the pulleys around. And I didn't do any of the gearing, just the pulleys. But that seemed to work okay. And then here I bought a precision level. Came in a nice aluminum box. Uh, because my woodworking level was not precise enough to do the leveling. And it seems to work. Both directions seemed fine. So that's good. I like it. And now I have a precise level for the future. So as you saw, I ran through all the gears. and At least all the gears just with the pulleys. I didn't do any of the side gears or changing that, but just to do tests. And this is not, in, not fully engaged. And you push that back, and there's a little, the little flat spot engages with those bolts, and that does the pulley tightening. And I don't know if it came off on the video, the time lapse, but I got a Reed Instruments non-contact tachometer, and I put one of the little, even though I didn't clean up this yet, I put a little reflective piece on and tested it and it with the here to here and on this to the first gear uh, gives the fastest and clear down to this level it gives like 400 something and that's without changing the side gears again so that'll be cool and the, I got the tachometer because that way I can figure out about how fast things are supposed to be and also I can then make a chart I think there's probably is a chart in this side panel of how to do the gearing but that way I can make a chart like if I'm working in aluminum and I have a certain speed I know which gear to or which which pulley and stuff to use for brass I can do the same thing so that was cool then I also got a sixty dollar or so precision level that comes with a fancy aluminum well a cheap aluminum case but with little padding in because for the sixty dollar precision level that does that precision I saw some notes online there's a bunch of different models of this because you know the same place probably makes it and sells it a bunch of different places so it's cheap and people were saying that depending on how it got shipped if it did not have the aluminum box Amazon would screw up and break it and I can confirm even with this one they screwed up the box so I'm glad it got the one that had the case because then it arrived intact and I was able to use this, since my woodworker's level was not precise enough. The, the thing with lathes that I learned online, it doesn't have to be actually level. It just has to be level with itself. Meaning, in the lathe black box of its entirety, it should not have any twist or, you know, end to end it should not twist so with smaller lathes you have more of this problem but even with the big ones you have this, all the different leveling feet get everything perfectly leveled to remove the twist in the table because when you're doing precise cuts which this probably can't do if the bed is twisted you and you're just running straight across according to between the tool and the bed you can get a taper on your part it's not a big deal if the part is really short. You'd still get a taper, but it would probably be too small to notice. But if you're doing a longer part and you need exactly one inch, this may be uh, plus or minus some thousandths of an inch below or above one inch, and that's different on this end. So you, it's very hard if you're just running straight across if this is twisted, you'll get incorrect results. So I got this, and I use it on both sides, and it's basically in the same spot, front and back, pretty much. 
at least, I mean, if this, if each little degradation is, you know, that small, then if the bubble is basically in the same spot between the two degradations on the side that I can see, both sides here and there, and also if you flip the level 180 degrees and it does the same thing, that means the level is calibrated because for any given location, if a precision, and I learned this online, if a precision level gives you one reading in this orientation and you flip it 180 degrees, if the level is properly calibrated, it should give you the same reading 180 degrees. It may not give you the same reading if it's in some other orientation, depending on the levelness of the location, but if it's in the exact same direction, flipping it 180 degrees should give the same. And when I test it on here, it's the from what I can tell, it's pretty close to the same thing on this side and this side. Also going this direction from here to over here. And I did work to try and make this a very stiff tabletop because I put a bunch of cross pieces in every <laughs> six or eight inches or so the whole way across. And then that plus the plywoods hopefully made it, you know, fairly stable. And yeah, so this is close enough to what should work for what I need. Because again, it's I'm just doing something like a pulley. That's not a precision thing. The that's just a you know, if it's close, it should work fine. As long as it's wide enough and it's deep enough and it's about the plus or minus the same size or approximately the right size, a pulley will work just fine. Now, if you're trying to get something such that it fits into somewhere else and meshes perfectly, that's a whole different issue. But for what I need, this lathe should do fine. And if not, eventually, maybe I can get a bigger one that's more precise and everything else. But for now, this will let me play. This will let me do basic things. And I only need, I only currently have a need for basic things. So it'll be good to learn on. And... These used to be, and you see a lot of people online, people do amazing things with this little lathe, this specific one, the Craftsman Atlas 618. So I don't have any worries that this won't do what I need based on the condition. Because again, it came in really good condition from the guy who had it. It's nice to get stuff from a machinist because they take care of their stuff. So next I think I'm going to... Take this lantern style tool post off and try and put my quick change tool post on and then we'll go from there. And I may try and actually make the pulley before I do all the cleanup and everything else because this is supposed to be, well, the lathe was working when I got it from the guy. He was using it once in a while for projects. So it's not like, other than the fact there's some minor surface rust in spots, it's not like it needs tuned up much before using. I just need to get familiar enough with it and get things sorted out to be able to do what I need. And now I'm just taking the lantern post off, trying to figure out where it went and it fell apart a few times. And then digging through my box of parts from the little machine shop to get all the pieces for the new quick change tool post. And I think I still need to have a spacer between it and the cross slide because it doesn't spin the whole way around it hits that raised section in some of the angles so I have to figure that out but uh, the t-slot worked and it, it clamps at least after I installed the little handle and such it clamps now as I discussed the, the stuff moves which it's not supposed to the, the angle adjustment is not tight enough to the lathe uh, I'll explain that later but uh, yeah it seems to work well, that's cool. Well, that's cool. I'm glad that they had the little T-nut because I was worried that initially, I think this comes with it because this is a blank that is attached to the bottom initially that you can then custom make to fit your own slots. But because this was part of the Atlas kit, it came with the little T-nut. So that was able to go in there, and then it also had 
some of the other bits and pieces and things. But one thing I noticed is this is not all tightened because you should not be able to take this and just rotate that by hand because if you can rotate that by hand, something's not tight enough and just the tool pressure will tend to shift things and cause all sorts of havoc. So I have to figure that out. But the quick change tool parts part works. So that's kind of cool. That specific, yeah, see, you should not be, when you tighten the tool post, it should not shift this. So something, something's not adjusted tight or correctly. That is where it goes to zero, but something is not adjusted correctly to have that locked down uh, in one place. So I have to, I'll have to figure that out definitely before I play around and do much. And the other thing I didn't show because I got it after I did the lathe accessories. I actually got it last weekend. So the lathe came with one of the steady rests, but one of the things that I saw someone selling online was a follow rest. And that is cool because I did not, that's the one piece that I knew of that existed for this lathe that I didn't have. And now I have it. That basically, you take this plate off and then there's a dovetail in there that that slides on and that fits up like that. And this will hold just to the right of where you're cutting with the tool, supposedly, or somewhere nearby with, with where that is. And then that lets you keep it from deflecting on small parts and such. So supposedly the guy said that he hadn't used it for his lathe and he sold it and upgraded it from one of these to 12 inch Atlas or 10 or 12, one of those. But he said he forgot about this and he doesn't think it got used much. So that's kind of cool. But it's interesting that this is the same paint. It's different paint than the lathe, but it's the same paint uh, color as the steady rest. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, got to that, have that too. So this will work, but like I said, I got to gotta dig into it before I play around and make sure that I know how to lock all these things and unlock uh, before I try and use it. Because I don't want to be trying to do something and then suddenly it shifts. That's not cool. <laughs>